welcome to Planet Bollywood. Many have been exposed in the Me Too storm. And among the big names, one is of Sohail Seth, who is not only accused by one woman, but by six women. And we have Diane Dry here with us on Planet Bollywood. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Uh, Diane Dry, <laughs> you've shared your story with the world. And I must say, you've been one of the very few who's handled the sexual misconduct right there, the mm. way you had to handle it, right? Uh, just for our audience, could you tell us what exactly happened that night at the party? Oh, God. Okay, so... Um so basically, uh, we were there for Ambi Valley Fashion Week, Bridal Fashion Week. Yeah. And uh, in fact, actually, I remember very clearly it was 2012 because for two years I was on a sabbatical after Khatro Ke Khiladi, which was in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I quit the business. And I had to come back to the industry. So I remember that, that year and that phase so clearly because, you know, uh, uh, it, was, it was a big comeback for me back into the industry. Um, and uh, we were in Delhi. I have a lot of friends in Delhi from designers to models. I mean, you know, it's been 20 years of going to Delhi uh, and spending a lot of time there. Uh, so yeah, as usual, there was an after party. It was in our hotel itself. Uh, we are supposed to kind of attend these parties as well. And a lot of us, I mean, you know, yeah. uh, we enjoy it because it's a, it's a sense of letting go. Uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, we I've obviously known Sohail uh, socially because, you know, when you're when you're in this industry, you kind of are invited to all of these parties. You're expected to kind of be out there and network and be seen in the newspapers and, you know, uh, have articles written about you. You know, whatever, the usual, you're photographed and, you know, the whole, yeah. the whole networking process mm -hmm. that happens, right, in the industry. So anyways, I've seen him in Bombay, I've seen him in Delhi and, uh, you know, it's the usual hi, hello and you know, you're familiar with people and they're acquaintances of yours, but we don't roam around in the big money power uh, circles, yeah. you know, so to speak. At least I don't. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who do. Uh, so, um, so yes, so we obviously, you know, everyone's kind of high, everyone's having a good time and everyone's dancing and I have been known to be uh, someone who always dances on top of a table or yeah. a speaker yeah. and I was mm -hmm. dating a DJ for the longest time so you know um, I'm always the so-called wild one or the crazy one or party mm -hmm. animal or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. people okay. will say all kinds of things um, so yes we were dancing and he was also dancing and a few other people were also dancing on top now I'm not a really small girl right mm -hmm. uh, uh, so obviously there's more than it's, it's almost like a train station yeah. at rush hour. Mm -hmm. There's that many okay. people. Uh, I'm, I don't like, you know, all of that. So I like to go and find a spot where I can breathe and no one is rubbing against me and all of that, that crap. Yeah. So dancing, dancing and being, however, he suddenly started to grab me hmm. and, you know, put his hand in my, in, in, you know, in, in my top and touch my boobs and hmm. whatever. And I was just like... So, you know, you kind of realize that, okay, you know, chalo, someone is drunk. And I mm. know that that should not be an excuse. But yeah. then you don't know, you don't expect it from people of this caliber. Absolutely. Right? Okay, the supposedly intellectual, you know, that, Authors, that whole thing, right? So you, you think of it like, okay, maybe he's just kind of lost control and this is a one-off thing. Mm. So I squeezed his ear. Okay, okay. And it, I remember this as clear as daylight. I can tell you the color of the walls of that bar. I can tell you the color of that couch. I can tell you his expression. Everything became maroon and purple. And I wasn't letting go. Mm. And, you know, everyone was laughing because mm. my friends who know me and mm. whoever knew him, you know, people were like, ha ha, you know, like it is a funny thing, you know, yeah. because so I squeezed his ear and whatever. And he's like, you know, was still grabbing it and all of that. And then we said, okay, chalo, you know, fuck. Yeah, let yeah. it go, you know, yeah, okay, okay, fine. He's, he's figured it out. He's learned his lesson. Yeah. Right. Soon after that, he's come and he's put his... He's tried to kiss me and, you know, his tongue is in my mouth. And I'm just like... And he, I can still remember the glass in his hand. A whiskey hmm. glass. I mean, you know, it's insane the kind of things you remember. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, and so clear. Mm -hmm. And I'm... And, and my instinct was to do this. Now, why I have the instinct to do that, uh, I will tell you in a bit. So I grabbed his, his, I bit his tongue and then he was just like, <gasps> and while he was doing that and he kind of backed away, mm. I grabbed his balls because I said, mm. you know what, mm. let me come and grope you. Mm -hmm. That right. was my process. I'm like, if you think you can do this to me, 
Let me see how you feel if I start touching your privates. Yeah. Right. Right? So come on. I grabbed it. That's when everyone started to realize, okay, she's, because they know how I am. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They've seen me. They know I'm not going to be standing the for this. Yeah. Okay. That you the golden bindas of no-nonsense person. So, now why is it <clears throat> that a woman has to be taken away, calmed down, so-called, Oh, you, maybe you had more to drink than normal. Hmm. How do you know what my normal is? Right. right. I'm a Catholic. Hmm. I have more alcohol in running in my veins than blood. Hmm. Okay. Who are you to judge? He's also drinking. Yeah. Hmm. How is it that nobody is saying anything about that? How is it that the man doesn't have to be calmed down? How hmm. is it that nobody is calling out that behavior? Yeah. Somebody, I believe, went and grabbed him by his collar hmm. and warned him. Saying that if you don't back up, because they know how I am. Yeah. He would have, and I wish I had pounded him. All the bad language that I've used, people are like, can we remove that? Why? Mm. Why? Mm. Am I, should I not <clears throat> be angry? Would you not <clears throat> be angry as a woman? Would you not be, would Absolutely. anybody on this planet not be? Every woman has faced this. Mm. Now, coming back to why I am, and why have I reacted like this, and how have I reached this point to react like this and be a hard ass bitch? Mm. Everybody wants to react like this. Every woman, every boy, every man that has ever been molested yeah. hmm. or sexually harassed or any of these things want to, they want to react like this. Hmm. Hmm. Why are they not reacting like this? Because in that moment you freeze, out, you're so shocked by so many things. Absolutely. I have become a hard person because of the experience I faced with a nameless person on a bus who has complete stranger touched his penis on my arm mm. i was 10 years old and i'm and there are adults on this bus i had tuition books in my lap i was in a sweater like a like a sweatshirt and in in jeans okay no makeup i'm 10 years old nobody came to my rescue till i finally realized i'm leaning into the man next to me mm. because this guy is putting his thing from his lungi and i'm and i'm i'm sitting in the seat that's facing the bus mm. so people can see mm. how uncomfortable i am that day i realized no one is going to come and help you yeah. Yeah. who am i okay who I, i'm what i have bodyguards roaming around me all the time i have what my father is supposed to be holding my hand and whatever so are we women supposed to sit at home and make chapatis because we need to be safe? But there also women are not safe because they're getting hit by their husbands or the fathers are raping mm -hmm. the uh, daughter-in-laws or the brother-in-laws doing something. So let's let's <coughs> let's come to the conclusion that this happens everywhere. Yeah. Okay, in yeah. every strata of this society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody, no woman, no. Where does it all come from? From children. Yeah. This is my damage mm -hmm. as a child. So I had to protect myself. So I finally realized that now or never. So I pulled his lungi off because I couldn't think when of what to do. 10 year old in the bus. Yes, the bus. I was 10 years old okay. on a BST bus in Bombay with my tuition books on my lap. Hmm. Not dressed provocatively. Hmm. I mean, you know, whatever, what, what, yeah. you know, I'm so riled up, I guess, the you know. Provocative manner. Yes, and <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and then neither did I have any f makeup, yeah. neither were my <clears throat> breast visible. <coughs> Neither um, was I drunk. Absolutely. I wasn't drunk. Yeah. So basically all the excuses yeah. that usually people give of a woman getting groped yeah. on, none of them ever existed in that situation. Correct, right? But Dainra... So, you... and neither did I want the publicity. Yeah. Right. So, Back neither then. am I saying this story or <laughs> bothering to go anywhere mm -hmm. because, oh my God, I need the publicity in my life yeah. from something like this. So, that and thereafter, hmm. 11, 12... Hmm. 13, 14, 15, breast came, things came, everything came, blah, blah, blah. It <coughs> did not matter. It did not matter what you wore. If you are a woman in this country walking in a burqa, okay, experiment this with a man. Hmm. Put him somewhere in a burqa and you see how many catcalls he'll get even in a goddamn burqa. Right. Try this. 